Hi everyone, welcome back to the H20BIM channel. Today we're going to talk about, well, we're going to talk about everything architectural and roofs really. Uh, the idea is that we want to create a really beginner friendly tutorial that goes through creating all of these various roof types in front of you from start to finish so that you are relatively au fait at the end of it and feel comfortable to go model pretty much any roof type that you need with the exception of maybe some of the detailed parametric styles and that kind of thing. So I won't delay any longer. Um, make sure to like the video as you're watching it and uh, subscribe if you can. And as ever, I hope you enjoy. So to begin, we're going to discuss the three standard types of architectural roofs and how we can place the first pass and um, the basic roof styles. So under the architecture tab, you will see that we have roof. And on the drop down there, you can see we have three, three variants present. We have roof by footprint, roof by extrusion, and roof by face. Now we're gonna go into detail on roof by face towards the end of the tutorial because I want to apply roof by face to some very complex geometry so you can see how effective it can be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on roof by footprint and roof by extension to start. So as default, this button here is a roof by footprint and that will take you into the drafting tools, okay? So on this view here, this is set to roof base as the floor plan. And you can see that the base level is going to be assigned to roof base. Now, we have a standard construction um, already assigned on our roof, but I'm going to just set that as a roof generic 400 mil for the moment. And then you can see we have drafting tools on the top corner here. And there's a number of ways we can create this. So let's say we take the rectangle tool because we have a rectangular building shape and we want to give an overhang offset of 500. We can do that and using the rectangular tool, we can select one corner all the way back to the other. And we've already created, as you can see in the 3D view on the right hand side, we've created the footprint that we desire for our roof. Now, if you look at the boundary lines, you'll notice that there's this little angle shape here. Okay. And when we select the boundary, you'll notice there's actually a degree angle for the pitch that's been assigned in advance as default. All roof by footprints automatically create a slope of 30 degrees on all boundaries. Okay, so we can finish that roof and you will see on the 3D here on the right hand side that we have a 30 degree pitch roof all the way. Okay, so there's two ways that we can change the pitch after this to make it um, to make it shallower or steeper if we need to. So I can select the 3D and I can change the slope here to be, for example, we're gonna say 45, and you'll see that we have a vertical increase in the height. But what that does is that is a universal slope for the roof. So that's not a per boundary slope. So we can also go back into our edit footprint and we can drag and select all of our boundaries and we can set 20 degrees for the slope. And now we have a much shallower roof construction. There is a third way, it's not a way I'd recommend, but if you're just undertaking a visual exercise in the early stages of project development, note on the right hand side here, the little drag hour. You can drag that up and down as needs be, and it will change the shape of the roof for us. And you'll notice that our slope now no longer has a standardized value, but we can go again and set that to 45, and that will standardize the shape across all the boundary conditions again. So that is a very quick introduction to roof by footprint. Okay, so we're gonna delete that way. Now I want to discuss the next one, which is roof by extrusion. And the way the roof by extrusion is, is you have to select a work plane that you want to extrude into, if that makes sense. So if you imagine that on the 3D view here, we have the short wall on the right hand side. So in the work plane dialog here, I'm gonna pick plane I'm going to press OK and I'm going to just rotate slightly and I'm going to pick the front face of that wall. Now it's going to ask for the roof reference and level offset. So I'm going to leave those as zero for the moment. I'm going to press OK. Now in the 3D space here, I can snap to the left hand side. I can draw a very quick vertical line from the midpoint and then I can just merely draw a boundary such as this. I'll delete away that and I can press finish. And you can see that we've actually extruded a roof that is perpendicular to the surface plane that we picked. Okay. So here I want to set a, a level offset of 400 because we know the construction is about 400. 
I said 4,000, apologies. So I set that to 400. And what I want is you have extrusion start and extrusion end values here, okay? And this manually will allow you to edit the offset from either end. So if you imagine that our extrusion start is zero, which means that it starts directly on the plane that we picked. So I want to set that to minus 300. And you'll see that it's actually came back 300 mil. So I want to actually push that out to 300 mil total. And now it extends beyond the end of our reference plane that we picked. Similarly, on the other side, you'll see we have minus 10315. So I wanted that to go another 300 mil. So I'm merely going to select that and set that value to a six instead. And now we have a 300 mil overhang on the other side as well. What I would say about this method is it gives you great control with the digit values. So you can be very, very accurate in the set out, but also you can see in the plan view here that we have the ability to drag our ends loosely if we just want a, a quicker uh, visual representation. I'm very quickly going to edit the view range of this so that we can see the full height of the roof there. And finally, we can select our walls, attach the walls to the underside by using the attach top base. So again, just to go through that again, click and drag over the walls you want, attach top base, ensure that your attached wall is set to top, and then you can pick your roof and you will have everything arrive up to the underside of your roof. So that's a very quick introduction into the base tools for modeling roofs in Revit. So now that we know how to place our roof by footprint, I want to show you how we can control and edit the roof slopes to create a hip roof, a gable roof, an unequal slope roof, and a flat roof, just as a couple more of the basic variations, okay? So going back to the architecture tab, we're going to go to roof by footprint. You can see that we still have our base set as roof base, and we still have our generic 400 mil. I'm going to select the boundary, and I'm going to give it an offset of uh, we've 500 mil, and we're going to use the rectangle tool to draw it. So as before, we've created our roof by footprint base sketch, okay? So as a default, because we have a slope of 30 degrees assigned to all the boundaries, that is as easy as it is to create a hip roof in Revit, okay? What we need to do now is understand how we can edit the various slope conditions on the boundary so that we can make the other types of roofs that I previously mentioned. So coming back to our view here, again, I'm going to edit the view range here, and it's going to pop that up to 3,000 on both of these. Selecting our roof and plan, I'm going to go back to edit footprint. And what we want is we actually want to make a gable roof from our roof by footprint sketch. So the easiest way to do that is to select two opposing boundaries on the short end, the gable end walls, and merely turn off. You see on the top toolbar here, we have defined slope, or on our properties tab on the left hand side, we have defined slope. Using either of those buttons, you toggle off that you don't want basically this boundary to be one of the boundaries that define the roof slope. So now we're met left with just the two lawn boundaries defining the slope in either direction. And now when we finish this edit mode, you'll see that we've now created our gable roof. Okay, so yet again, I'm going to select all the walls by pressing tab when I hover over them, attach the top of the wall to the underside. And now we've created our gable roof. So what happens then when we want an unequal angle or an unequal slope on the roof? Let's say we're abutting something that we don't want um, a steeper fall abutting the wall adjacent. So quite simply, we can go back into our sketch mode and we can assign different values to the opposing boundary lines. So here I'm going to set that to 45 and over here I'm going to set it to 20. And now looking at the, the construction on the right hand side in the 3D, note what happens to the walls that have attached to the underside and the overall roof profile. You'll see now that it's all went off center. So what we've actually done is we've created an unequal angle in either direction. So this is very, very useful for certain circumstances where you might just need a very sheer pitch on one side, or if you have a hip roof that you want a shallower angle to one end than the rest of it, you can apply this in the same method. Finally, 
what we need to know as well is very common roof type is actually a flat roof construction. So again, this becomes very simple, straightforward once you understand how the boundaries define the slopes. We go back into our edit footprint and we select the two remaining boundaries that have the slopes activated and we're going to turn off the vine slopes. And again, watching the right hand side, we now have a flat roof construction and because our walls are attached to the roof, the profile at the top of the walls change as well. Just to interrupt the tutorial here slightly, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more information like this. Um, I do have a quick question for you, if you would indulge me in the comment section below. Could you tell me what roofs you've previously had a difficulty trying to generate in Revit? And I will hopefully do a follow up tutorial with any suggestions that you have on it. Uh, I appreciate that what we have here is a minor selection of the possible variables. So if you have one that you've struggled with in the past, or if there's one of these that you were actually looking to figure out how to do and happens to be uh, undertaken in this tutorial, then by all means, let me know in the comment section below. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how you can create and edit the roof assembly uh, so that you can show your various construction layers within your roof buildup. Okay. So currently at the moment, you see that it's a very basic shape and I've drawn a section through our plan view here on the left hand side. So I'm going to double click into the section and it's going to open our section view. And as you can see, we have a very rudimentary wall buildup shown, but we actually have no buildup or assembly shown for the roof construction. So what I want to do is actually create a rough Suprema roof construction that is somewhat representative of it. I'm not going to go into too much nitty gritty here. Okay. So the way we edit the roof assembly so that we can actually see the various construction layers is by using the edit type tool. Okay. So when we select the roof, on the properties on the left hand side, you'll see that we have the name and type of the roof. But just below that on the right hand side, we have edit type. So we're going to press that. Next to the type, we have a button called duplicate. And what you want to do when you're creating a new assembly from an existing uh, family that's already been brought into the project or an existing system family as such, you want to use the duplicate term. Okay. You don't want to edit anything that's already existing in the project because you don't want to accidentally change instances that you weren't aware were already present. So using duplicate, we're going to call this Suprema Mechanical Roof Construction. And under the structure, we're going to press edit. Okay, so we have a parameter column here. We have a value column and under the construction segment, we have structure. And this is where we edit the assembly of the roof. Okay, so pressing edit, you'll see that it reflects the left hand side that we have in the section. We have a single layer that's 400 mil thick. It's deemed a structure, but there's no material assigned. It's just one blank layer that's 400 mil thick. And what we want to do is add layers to match some sort of known roof construction. So to that end, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to change the core boundary and I'm going to change this to 25 mil. Okay. And here I'm going to go into the material type and I'm going to press apply. No. I'm going to press wood and see if there's something. So I'm going to use wood sheathing chipboard, but really this should be some sort of ply, plywood. I'm not going to go into assigning materials right now. Okay. So we have a structure of the wood sheet. Okay. And I also want to insert one more layer of structure and I'm going to say down and I'm going to give that about 200 mil. And here I'm going to go back down to wood again. And you'll see that we have a blank material type for a, a, a rafter or a joist layer. Okay, so I'm just going to assign a 200 mil thick layer there. Okay, so that assigns our structural core boundary. Okay, what I also want to do is insert another layer. And here we're going to set, you see the way we've got substrates, thermal layer layers, membrane layers. I'm going to set a membrane and I'm trying to discover, um, I wonder if we say DPC, DPM. So I'm just going to use a roofing EPDM membrane right here. Okay. And we can assign a thickness to that. I always give it a notional thickness so we can see it, but some people choose not to give it a thickness. Okay. And then inserting again, we want to put in an air or a thermal layer. I'm going to use this. I'm going to put in 100 mil and I'm going to search for a insulation value <clears throat> and you can see that we have rigid insulation here <coughs> excuse me 
So selecting the rigid insulation, we've got 100 mil of rigid insulation, 3 mil layer of the membrane. So what we need to do is add a final layer to the very top, and this is going to be our finish. And I'm just going to put in some sort of aluminium. Um, I'll put in a standing seam. And here we're just going to give that a notional 6 mil or so. Okay. And there we have a very quick and easy way of creating a new roof assembly from scratch by editing an existing roof assembly. What I would note about this here is that make sure that you assign your core boundary correctly. Your core boundary really should have your structure items only unless you want to designate it differently for coordination purposes, which is a different discussion. So typically when in doubt, I assign the core boundary to be the structural items and then I have the finishes on either side of the core boundary. So press OK. You'll see that membrane layer function requires zero thickness. That's something I forgot. So I'm going to put that in as zero. I'm going to press OK. OK. And now you can see that we have a rudimentary roof buildup where we have our structural joist layer. We have our deck, which is chipboard in our instance, but should be plywood. We have 100 mil of insulation. There is a membrane layer in between. And we also have our 3 mil or our 6 mil of cladding on top. Okay. And using TL, you can see that we have the various line weights already present. Okay, So that is how you quickly create and edit your roof construction assembly to match whatever your needs are. So going back to the flat roof style, I want to show you how you can use the modify sub elements tool on the roof so that you can edit a flat roof to have slight falls for drainage purposes. So hovering over our roof and selecting it, you will see that we have modify sub elements here. Okay. And there's various ways that you can edit using the modify sub elements, but I'm only going to go through one quick example here. Really, this is for tinkering and you'll figure out that you can actually kind of split the roof in two and raise the, a, par, a portion of the roof with a full line or you can add independent points or you can pick supports as well. So there's various functions here, but what I want to do is I want to say modify sub elements and you'll see that you can select one of the points and give it a value that changes okay but in this instance i want to add a point so i'm going to add a point centrally here okay and what we can do is when i select that roof now after adding that point you'll see that you can see the point centrally now i can't edit it directly so you have to go back to your modify sub elements tool and then you select the point and I can increase or decrease this. So let's say I want this roof to drain centrally. I'm going to give that a value of minus 100, let's say. And watch what happens on the 3D view over here on the right hand side. You'll see that what we've actually got is a uniformity of fall down to that point because everything else on the boundary is set to an elevation of zero relative to the host level of the roof. But now we have a single point that's been set 100 mil below the host level of the roof. Ignore the pattern, that's just derived from the actual material. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit this material now so that we can very quickly and easily keep a flat base to the roof, but just alter the insulation depth without altering the full construction so that we can have this variance just in the insulation and not in the full roof construction. So we're gonna come back to that in a moment. So now we're going to discuss how we can create a variable material within our total construction assembly that will follow the falls of the roof but maintain a flat construction below it. So this is the example that we used previously when we were creating our falls for a unified drainage point in the center of the roof. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to change the construction of this roof so that we don't have falls on the underside but as well just within the insulation depth. So going to our section, you will see that we have this situation where we already have the falls in place, okay? And we have a flat construction at the base. And I'm going to show you why that is. Going into the structure edit dialog, you will see that we have our thermal air layer, the rigid insulation, the 100 mil layer, set to variable, okay? Turning that off, press OK, you will see what happens. The entire construction of the roof goes to the falls. This obviously isn't a detail that works. This at the moment is a deck with a concrete 
precast deck. So you wouldn't have precast elements to bow like that intentionally, hopefully anyway. <laughs> so this is a detail that doesn't work. So what we need is the variance in the insulation as we previously had shown. So the way to do this is to go into your edit type again, under construction, the structure edit button, thermal air layer, you have your rigid insulation that's 100 mil. In this instance, I actually want to keep, increase that to 200 mil because you want to make sure that your insulation layer is at least deep enough to account for the full roof fall. So in the previous way it was, it was too shallow in the center point. It wouldn't have had any of the U values that we required. So I'm increasing that to 200 to account for the fall so that we have a minimum depth maintained at the center point of the roof, okay? And then we're gonna select our variable layer on the right hand side. Let me press okay, okay. And now you can see that our roof construction has our structural deck on the flat, our membrane on the flat, and that our rigid insulation layer is two falls in order to give the drainage profile for the roof. Okay, now I want to show you how to model a roof by footprint so that you can guarantee a consistency in overhang around your walls going forward should your project or building shape change, okay? So going back to your architecture tab, roof, roof by footprint, you go into the usual dialogue that we've had where we have been drafting our boundary wall, okay? But what I want you to do in future, if you want to have an overhang for your roof construction, is I want you to use the pick walls tool here, okay? And I want you to give the overhang value on the option list here, okay? And then what you can do is you can highlight the wall that you want. If the walls are in a chain as they are here, you can press tab and you will get the full chain and then click once and it'll create the full boundary with the 500 mil offset for the overhang. What's fantastic about this is that you've basically given a lock or a pin property for the roof boundary offset from the wall, which means that we can merely select our walls going forward and let's say our building has to grow. We can click and drag and our roof profiles change comfortably with it. Now I want to talk to you about the various openings that you can apply to your roof construction. Um, and this isn't talking about the likes of a Velux window because there are window families that host directly on the face of a roof. But what I want to talk about is an actual physical opening so that you can build an item up through your roof. So there's a few variants here. In the architecture tab, you'll see that we have the opening uh, sequence of tools here. Okay, And the ones that are really applicable to the roof are the by face opening, the vertical opening, and the dormer opening, okay? We're gonna circle back to the dormer opening because I'm gonna go through a model exercise of how to create a dormer from scratch, including the dormer opening. But at the moment, I'm going to show you the difference between the by face and the vertical tools, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use vertical and I'm gonna select vertical opening and select the roof. Again, this will bring up our draw tools and I want to just draw a rectangle here through the section, okay? I'm going to finish that, and now we have a vertical opening in our roof. Now, on the flip side of the roof, on the right-hand side in the section, I want to do by face, okay? And again, I'm going to select the roof, but you'll notice that's gonna highlight the plane of the roof. As it's by face, we're not just cutting a vertical shaft through, we're actually cutting one perpendicular to the face, so we have to assign a face specific and not just the whole roof. So I'm going to select this face and using the draw tools again, I'm going to create the rectangle through the section, okay? And on the 3D view now, you can see we've got both types. So what is the difference? Well, if you actually look at the tool set itself, you'll, you'll kind of see a visual indicator what the difference is. So going to the section, on our left-hand side here, we have the vertical opening. And you can see what it means in the icon there, that you have this 90 degree opening that just goes straight up through the roof, irrespective of what the angle of the roof is. So I could select that entire roof if I wanted and change the slope value 45 degrees. And you'll see that that remains a vertical cut through the roof. Similarly, undoing that by face gives you a perpendicular and 90 degree angle from the face that you chose as the, the opening to be hosted onto. So yet again, we have a 90 degree angle here, 
So I could actually go into my dimension and I could give you an angular dimension to that. Okay. And dragging that out there so you can see a little bit clearer. Again, I can select the roof and change the entire slope. And you'll maintain that 90 degree angles. It will basically rotate the opening to maintain a 90 degree angle from the face. So that is how to create a vertical open your roof and how to create a by face open your roof, both of which have different functions and both of which cut the roof profile differently. So now we're going to talk about how we can create a dormer in our roof as so that we can model the dormer roof we can create the opening for the full dormer out of the main roof. We can join the two roof geometries together and then we can have our rising walls up between them. Okay. So to begin, what we want to do is create the roof of the dormer first. So in our architecture tab, we're going to go to roof, roof by extrusion. When requested to pick a plane, we're going to select a plane manually and we're going to pick the leading edge of our roof. It's going to ask for a level. We're not going to concern ourselves with the values here for the moment because we're going to draft in what we want. So I'm going to press OK. And then I'm going to snap to the face that I want. Okay. Going up from the center line here, I'm going to draw a nominal value line. And then I'm going to give a quite a shallow dormer at 2000. Okay. I'm going to select that, press MM for it to mirror it along the axis and select the center line. And then I'm going to delete away that center line. That line isn't, we don't want that as part of the geometry. So now you can see on the plan that we've associated the extrusion to the boundary edge of the roof. So when we finish edit mode, okay, we'll see that's a little bit low to start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually change the offset by 300 mil. And it popped up a little bit more. You'll also see that it's a very, very deep. It's extruded far too far for our use case. So you can see that we actually have an extrusion start and extrusion end. So I want to give the extrusion start maybe a 200 mil, uh, sorry, a minus 200 mil from the boundary. So it's just offset a little bit back from our primary roof. And we're going to set that to minus 2000 just for the moment, okay? So as you can see, in the 3D view here, this looks a little shy of the connection where we want it. But in the architecture tab, sorry, in the modify tab, apologies, you will see that we have this join unjoin roof tool. Okay. And the idea here is when we select that, we can select the bounding edge that we want to join to the main roof. So I can select the back edge here of the dormer and then select the main roof plane that we want to join it to. And once I do that, you'll see that it pushes and creates a join condition between the two. So now that we've done that, what do we need to do to complete our full dormer? So snapping to the top here, or in our plan view, I'm going to go to architecture, and I'm going to go to wall. Okay, I'm going to create a quite a narrow wall, hopefully. We're going to use the location wall as the finished face exterior and the base constraint is going to be our roof base basically. Our top constraint we're going to give a notional value of 3000 just for the moment so we're not overshooting. And then we're going to draw around where we want it. Okay? Now I don't want it to be quite so tight to the boundary so I'm going to give it an offset of 100 mil and then I'm going to press tab so I'm going to give that offset of minus 100 I'm going to press enter I'm going to press the spacebar and um, just to flip the orientation to suit and now you can see that we're drawing our walls in our plan view and they're offset 100 mil from the underside of our dormer roof so in 3d view now you can still see that that's not correct okay but what I'm going to do is I'm going to tab and select those walls in the train in the chain and I'm going to use the attached top base make sure that the wall is set to top and then I'm going to pick the dormer and now you can see quite clearly that we have created our walls that are rising to the underside of our dormer finally what we need to do is create an ope in our main roof construction 
so that our dormer is clearly cutting through. Okay, and this is where our opening by dormer comes in. So the way the dormer opening works is quite simple. We select the by dormer opening, we select our primary roof, and then we pick our roof and wall edges. So we can pick our edges there, and then we can pick our external faces of our wall. And you may need to just pivot and tab sometimes to try get hold of the construction. I'm struggling on this wall by the looks of it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to wireframe. And I'm going to select there, and then I'm going to go back to hidden line. Now this looks a bit of a mess, but what we can do now is the TR command, and that's trim and extend in the modify. And we can start to trim our lines appropriately. And now we've created our dormer there, okay? So when I finish that, you can see there's quite a clear divide now between our primary roof construction and our rising walls and our dormer. And when we go into the section, you can see there's a very clear distinction between our dormer roof, our primary roof, and our walls. And now you can also highlight the full dormer opening in the section. So that is how to create a dormer roof or a dormer within your roof and appropriately cut it out from the primary. Okay guys, now we're going to look at how we can resolve an awkward kind of double gable with an extension recess, okay? So um, looking at our model here, you can see that we've basically taken the original model and we've built an extension onto the side of it. And we have a gable that continues on one plane across one full face, but then we have a recess here. So our gable has to have this little kind of return on it. Now, what happens is because we have an overhang of 500 mil, when we rotate around to the front face here, you'll see that we actually need to tuck this smaller roof in under the larger gable for the weathering detail. We can't just have it proud as it is, and you can see why it is a giant gap. So what we need to do is be able to bring that in, but there's no way to manually edit the footprint so that that would happen. Because what you do is you'd lose the overhang here. So if I was to bring that into here, and press OK, you would lose the overhang value and it's still not a correct weathering detail. So what we want to do is we want to undo that and we want to maintain this overhang but somehow tuck this line in against the wall from the main geometry. Okay. So you'll see that we don't have these two walls here attached to the underside of the roof at the moment. They're just going to their regular un unconnected heights. Okay, and the way to do this is you, you'll notice that without the manual control, I can't push this in. So I can set this wall, this return wall, the small section of wall to attach to the underside of the roof. And now by using, with, with, because that is now at that level, you're able to use in the modify tab, the join roof. And you, what you can do is you can select the leading edge that you want to tuck in under the primary roof. So I'm going to select the leading edge and then I'm going to select the wall face. This wouldn't have worked had I not attached that wall to the underside of the, the larger roof. So I'm going to attach that. And you'll see that it slides in the 500 mil that we needed. What's excellent about this now is I can actually now detach that wall and the alignment remains. So then we can use our edit profile for the wall to correctly change the shape of the wall to what it needs to be from the modeling perspective. Because by just attaching it, it was only attaching in the vertical, but we were never going to be able to infill that segment there. And now you can see that we have a fully finished detail with our second smaller gable tucked in under the primary gable. So that's a really useful tip and trick that not a lot of people are very familiar with. And uh, I'm glad to be able to show you because when you need it, you can spend an awful lot of time trying to figure it out. Okay, so with the quick roof variant tips, we're gonna start with the lean to roof. So the lean to roof is very simple. We brushed upon it earlier. We're gonna go roof, roof by footprint. We're going to select our roof base as the level. And then we're going to use our pick walls tool. We're going to give it the overhang of 500 that we used previously, and we're going to tab to select the whole chain and click. Now we've created each of our boundaries. 
we're going to select all of our boundaries button one we're going to turn off the defined slope and just leave defined slope on one and then we're going to make that a little bit shallower we're going to say 20 degrees oh we'll actually go shallower again we'll go 10 degrees for the lean to and finish now we pop it to our 3d view you'll see now that we have a single lean to we can then use our attached walls to the underside and we have a single lean to roof so next we're going to look at how we can create a butterfly style roof so again we're going to go to our architecture tab we're going to say roof roof by footprint we're going to use the wall selection tool and we're going to tab all the way around the chain we're then going to select the two short boundaries and make sure their defined slope is turned off and then on the slope of these other boundaries we're actually going to give that a, a negative value so minus 15 let's say and then what we're going to do is we will give the overall construction a height when we're done okay so as you can see we've placed it now and we can change the base offset to let's say 1500 and then we can tab select all our walls attach the top and base and now you've got a completed butterfly style roof in Revit. So now we're going to talk about how we can model a gambrel style roof or an American barn style roof if you're if you're not familiar with the term. Um, this is where you have a double pitch in kind of an arcing uh, shape so you can maximize the volume within. So the way to do this is by extrusion. So we go to the architecture tab, we go to roof, roof by extrusion. It'll ask us to pick our work plane. We're going to select our plane and I'm going to select the face of the short wall that I want to build perpendicular to. Okay, so I'm going to select the face here. It's going to ask us for our level and offset. I'm going to leave those because it's okay because we're drafting. So I'm going to press okay. And then I'm quickly going to snap and I'm going to draw a vertical line up from the midpoint. And we're going to give that about 3,500. And then going to draw a shallow angle at 10 degrees at 3000 and then I'm just going to kick back at about 60 degrees from there okay and I'm going to extend a little bit beyond the roof then I'm going to select those two lines that I've just created I'm going to press mm to mirror axis or mirror axis in the modify tab I'm going to select that central line then I'm going to delete away the central line and I'm going to finish okay as you can see, the extension has gone entirely too long, so I'm going to drag that back. And then now that we have our extrusion at the start and the end of our walls, we're going to give a notional value to offset. So I'm going to say extrusion start 500. And I'm going to add a 500 to the negative value here. So that's 12,850. Now you can see that the alignment of the roof is a little bit incorrect because I didn't actually mirror from the center line of the overall construction just the center line of one of the walls. So I actually want to resolve that. I'm going to go into the plan view and I'm going to select the wall. Sorry, I went in the wrong direction. There we have it. Sorry about that. And now that we have created our overall roof pitch. I'm just going to select all the walls and use the detach top base, select that, and now we have a finalized gamble roof as shown. Next, we're going to discuss how you can model a cat slide cable. And the way the cat slide cable works is you actually have an extrusion to the front face of the building or the rear face that dictates the overall fall of the roof in one direction, and then you've got the opposite wall. So your primary wall isn't actually dictating the fall, it's your extrusions, your extensions wall that's dictating. So again, we're going to go into our roof, roof by footprint. We're going to use our select walls. We're going, we have our overhang already associated, so we're going to tab until our chain is selected, and then we're going to click. We are then going to make sure that all of these walls are not defining the slope. So we're going to turn off defined slope. So the only walls that are defining the slope is our lawn rear wall and our front extension wall. I'm going to change the value of the two of those to something a little bit less steep, so 22 degrees. I'm going to press OK. And now I'm going to, in the 3D view, select all the walls by tabbing the chain, attach the top base to the roof, and now you've got a completed cat slide gable wall. 
Next we're going to talk about how to model a dual hip roof in Revit. So again, architecture tab, roof, we go to our roof by footprint and then we want to select our walls as we have previously. We then select our primary wall, we tab until we select the chain and we click and we basically leave everything as defining the slope. So when we press OK, you'll see we automatically generate the full hip roof. What's great about this is we can go in and we can actually give different values to the extension here. So let's say we wanted these to be at 20 degrees instead. And now we have a shallower pitch of the hip joining the primary roof. So that's how you create a double hip, a dual hip roof in Revit. So going back to our dual hip roof, I want to create a half hip on either end. And this basically is a raised flat section in the center so that you have a slight angle and a slight angle and then a central point, okay? Um, and the easiest way to do that is in your plan view to create reference planes. So we press RP to start placing our reference planes and this will allow us to draw our reference. So we're just gonna draw the first one here. We're gonna select the initial one. We're gonna press MM to mirror axis and we're gonna select the midpoint of the roof as the axis, okay? We're then going to select our roof and we're gonna edit our footprint. Using SL to split the element or in your modify tab, split element up here. We're going to select the intersections between our boundary and our reference planes. As such, okay. Then we're going to select the upper and the lower segments of the split that we just created. And we're going to say that they no longer define the slope. Then selecting our two centers we're going to leave them active as defining the slope, okay? But what we need to do is we actually need to give these a value above the floor. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to set a thousand. And when we finish, you can see now that we have a little raised section that's come up. So we have an undefined boundary and an undefined boundary for the slope. Sorry, the undefined slope on either small side here. And then our boundary starts, our definition of the slope starts on this central section, which has popped up. So I actually want to go back into that again. I'm going to select this central boundary on either side again, and I'm going to increase that to 1500, I think, just so it's a little bit more prominent. I'm going to press OK. And again, we're going to tab select our walls, attach top base. And now we've created a half hip roof on the end with actually a dual hip, half hip roof, just to be confusing. Now we're going to show you how to model a clear story roof where you have basically two different types of roofs coming into play. You have a high level gable style roof and then you've got a low level lean to style roof on either side. So the first thing to do is go to roof by footprint and then we're going to draw a rectangle around our entire boundary here. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to give a value offset that we want from the boundary. So I'm going to move this down 3000. I'm going to move this one up 3000. We're then going to turn off define slope on either of the small boundaries and we're going to finish that segment. Then on our base offset from, we're going to set that to 3500. Next, we're going to do our two lean to roofs. So first of all, you can see that the roof is actually being cut in our view here. So I'm going to edit the view range and I'm going to pop that up to 7,000 and 7,000. So we can see our center line. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our roof. We're going to say roof by footprint again, and then we're going to draw our new boundary here. But we want this to extend out about, oh, hold on a second. We'll move that out about 500. We'll move this about 500. And we'll move this pipe of 500. We're going to turn off three sides of defined slope as shown. And on this one, we're going to define our slope as quite a shallow slope. We're going to say 15 degrees and 115 degrees. We're going to press OK. Now, we're going to edit our gable so that our end overhangs match the end overhangs of our lean to at the lower level. 
and then we're going to take our lean to at the lower level and we're going to mirror it around the axis by picking axis so we can press mm or mirror axis from the modify roofs tab so i'm going to say mm and i'm going to pick the center line and now we've mirrored that to the other side now what we want to do is we want to go to our 3d view we're going to select our walls and we're going to attach top base to one side we'll get an ignorable warning here we can press ok we'll attach the top and base to the other side we'll get an ignorable warning and again we'll do it to the top and finally we need to input two walls on either side here so again i'm going to go to our roof generic on the lean to i'm going to edit the footprint and i'm going to move that about 300 mil in i'm going to finish again i'm going to do the same on this side i'm going to move it about 300 mil in and press finish and then i'm going to go to wa for the architectural wall i'm going to put the base on the roof and i'm going to extend the top of it 3500 and i have the finish face exterior as the selected um alignment for the wall position so i'm going to select there to there and i'm going to do the reverse down here and you can see in 3d that we're after generating these walls so now i'm going to select one wall i'm going to attach the top base i'm going to select base of the wall from the option there and pick this lower level lean to again i'm going to do it on the other side as well attach base the lower level lean to and then i'm going to select both walls attach base select top and press the top roof okay now what we need to do is we actually need to use a wall type that is narrow enough to fit on the total construction of the 300 mil that we gave so i'm just going to select this one here and that one is no narrower <laughs> so give me a moment here we go so we have selected a wall type there that works and finally we actually need to retract our walls a little bit just so they're in line with the rising walls coming up okay so we're going to go modify we're going to trim extend both elements we're going to select the face that we want and we're going to select our walls on top and we're going to do that again down below we're going to align to our external face pick our two top walls and where you have this little return going on here we can probably use our trim command that's a bit of a problem so there's a neatening exercise that has to be undertaken here where we can overrun so we might join our walls we would have better wall wrapping if we were using walls of the same construction type so that's why we're not wrapping correctly but in essence that is how you create a clear story type roof construction from scratch by using a gable roof and two lean twos at a lower level finally we're going to do a dutch style gable roof which is essentially a gable roof with a kind of a fin around the base that fans out like a standard hip so it's a mix of a hip roof and a gable roof in order to create it so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go architecture roof by footprint and we're going to select our walls for our overhang we have our overhang still assigned to 500 so we're going to tab all the way around and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the offset tool and we're going to give it an offset value of 2500 and we're going to use copy and i'm actually going to select those internal walls those internal boundaries sorry as such then we're going to use tr for trim and extent and we're going to trim the internal boundaries as such and then we're going to select all of our internal boundaries and we're going to turn them off as defined slope finally we're going to select our external boundaries and we're going to set our slope to something more shallow like 15 degrees okay we're going to press ok and you can see that we have the lower section of our roof now created as such so it's a kind of a hip with a hole in the middle is the way to think about it so next we want to go to roof and we're going to go to our roof by footprint again and we want to select the rectangle tool and we are going to draw the infill piece as shown what we're also going to do then is we're going to select both our ex extremities and we're going to turn off find slope and we're going to leave 30 degrees as the slope on the other two for good measure we're going to press ok and then turning around to the end face of our building we're going to take it up from that level to that level and then once we understand where the start end position is we're going to move that down as such and now all we need is two little wall infill pieces and we have completed a dutch gable roof
So here I'm going to introduce you to a couple of examples examples of complex roofs that you may not know uh, you can create in Revit if you're only new to Revit. And earlier on in the tutorial I was talking about the three variants of placing roof whereby on the drop down you had roof by footprint, roof by extrusion and roof by face. Now roof by face is actually a very very powerful tool because it means that we can use shapes like what we have here which is a generic mass in place basically it's just it's just a mass that has some odd angles that would be hard to replicate for the roof geometry using the roof tools on their own but using the roof by face we can select the faces of the mass to create our roof type so in order to do this we go to roof roof by face then we select the face that we want and we can say create roof. Now we can also say select multiple, but there is a problem with selecting multiple. And this happens all the time that when you select multiple and you say to create roof, it'll only create one face at a time. But this isn't a problem because we can continue just to add additional items to it. And there straight away we have a roof that doesn't follow any kind of standard geometry generated very quickly by just using the move the, the roof by face tool. Now it's one thing when you're using flat surfaces like this, but what happens when you have something like this? Now this is kind of a um, an irregular shape that kind of uses a slice of a conal section with an extrusion on either end at an angle. So this is a, to try model this as the roof tools would be incredibly difficult to achieve. But by using the mass and using the roof by face tool, we can actually create the curvature of this roof very easily. So once we've created the mass that we want, we can go into our roof, roof by face. Okay, and I want the faces to be at the bottom of the roof here. So I'm going to select the mass and I'm just going to say create roof after the selection. And I've only created that top surface. I haven't created the, the sides or anything like that. So just using the top surface, I can say create roof. And straight away, we have our roof. So if I go to VG and I turn off, the, sorry, if I go to my mass and side settings, I'm going to turn off the visibility of those. And now I can merely select the chain of walls below, attach the top and base, select walls, take top, and now we have a beautiful, very unique shaped roof that otherwise we wouldn't have been able to create using the standard roof tools in Revit. So, that really is an introduction to how to create complex roofs in Revit. There are multiple other ways of doing it. You can create a in-place generic family or a model family with the correct category assigned, um, where you use your massing tools to actually generate a family from scratch. Or, better yet, you can use some sort of parametric design, which we will touch upon on another video. I will follow up a video with multiple variants of complex roofs, just so you have kind of a greater idea of what's, what's possible um, in the early stages of project development, at least using this kind of method before you go into the parametric roof design and start using tools like Dynamo and the likes. So everyone, that concludes this beginner's friendly tutorial on architectural roofs in Revit. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of follow-up tutorials. We'll be going down the rabbit hole as such, creating parametric roofs down the line, creating full roof construction uh, tutorials where we actually create our rafters and purlin systems and that kind of thing. We will also go into greater detail about the variances of the finishing out of the roof. So we'll go into how to create our fascias, our soffits, our gutters, our downpipes, that kind of thing for the drainage of the roof. Finally, we will probably go into some sort of 2D detailing of roof information. So for example, where we have a parapet like this, how we can use a combination of 3D geometry and 2D details uh, to you know, repeating details in order to create our presentation, IFC, our issue for construction drawings. So, as ever, thank you for checking out the 8020 BIM channel. I hope you found this useful. I will have a corresponding blog post to this over on the website with step-by-step -step instructions. So, if you find the Irish accent a little bit hard to, to, uh, to track, maybe you want to go over there and just read some proper English. <laughs> um, other than that, as ever, Thank you for checking it out. Make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you again next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.